How do you know what to change in a circuit if it can't be measured? Ilan in Israel writes, Hey Paul, you keep mentioning the non-measurable differences you hear when you design an amplifier, and those are supposedly just as important as those that can be measured. So if these differences cannot be measured, dry Colorado air out here, how do you figure out what should be changed in the design to tune the amplifier to the desired results? How do you translate non-measurable inputs into changes that have to be made on specific electronic parts in your design rather than others? Wow. Very well constructed question and one that we get asked a lot because we, we struggle with not keeping score. We struggle with being unable to quantify certain things because in our Western civilization, we're taught everything is measurable, everything is known. If it isn't, it's either bullshit or magic, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of what we're taught. And then there's this whole other side over here that, that believes, oh, well, you can't know everything, so then you, then you know nothing. None of this is quite so black and white as, as, as all of that. We should be able to measure just about everything, and over time we can. The, boy, you know, I, I keep chipping away at this, at this question, and uh, as I said a few days ago, maybe, may, you know, maybe each time I'll, I'll hit a little chink right off of it and we'll chip a little bit more away, and, and then it'll become a little bit clearer to all of us. But we just simply don't understand all of what we hear. So some of it is because we don't have the equipment to, to measure such things. That's not to say that science, that, it, that if I went over to, to NASA, uh, th th that they couldn't figure it out. They could. I'm sure they could. I, I'm sure there are people far, far smarter than we are that could absolutely figure all this out. But I think they have better things to do. We're just a small group of people over here that are just saying, you know what, there's something better out there. There's, um, oh, gosh, um, what's, a good, what's a good example? I always go back to cars or food. You know, you can spec every portion you want out of a car and it won't tell you how it feels to sit in and drive it. Could we come up with a measurement system that explicitly tells you? Maybe, I think we can measure all the things that we're thinking, but how do you, how do you measure the thrill of, you know, when the, when the car takes off and, and I, I have a, a new car, I got an electric car, it's a Tesla, and it's, oh man, what a kick in the ass. But it's different. How do, when you sit in that car, and you step on the, the pedal, it just rockets you back in the seat because there's no spin up. It's not like a gas engine. Electric motors have great torque right off the, the, the starting line. They just, I mean, they're like a slot car. It just goes, right? And it's ultra quiet. And then when you let off the gas, well, there's no gas. When you let off the pedal, it, the regenerative braking just slows the whole thing down. I can describe that to you. We can measure all that, but I cannot tell you how it feels to sit in there with the quiet of the air conditioning, with the music going, with the feeling that you get. If you sat in there with me, you'd know it. You'd believe it. And I can tell you all day long, I can give you all these measurements, but I can't effectively share the experience with you just as we all struggle to explain how we hear things that we don't measure. So with that said, that long-winded preamble, which I apologize for, the question comes down to, well, if you can't measure it, how do you deal with it? A lot of that's experience. I've spent the last 45 years learning 
what this change does to my ear. That's been part of the, the learning experience, kind, kind of like you know, baking sourdough bread is a real art. I, I, I've struggled for years to try and get my sourdoughs to come out the way that an expert does. And I've followed all their instructions. I've measured everything down to a gnat's ass. And it still doesn't come out the same. Why? I don't have the experience. I don't know when the dough feels just this way, or I can tell by feel alone what the moisture content is. Some people can. I can't. I don't have the experience. And in the same way with electronics, if you try and do exactly what we do, you're going to start on a path, a long path that I already went on years and years ago. And how did we get there? Well, Stan and I, my old partner, Paul and Stan Audio, PS Audio, we, we started with a very basic, simple circuit, a phono preamplifier. And we started learning what happens when we change this transistor to that transistor. Let's just take that. Why does a, uh, a 4401 sound different than an 8099? Well, when you, you know, the first thing you have to do is you have to actually experience it. You have to replace this, the, the 4401s with 8099s, right? Or the, the equivalent, which is the 8599 of the PNP. So we did those experiments and we heard it. We could consistently hear it. Plug these in, we had little sockets. We could plug these transistors in. It measured identically. For everything we were measuring, it was the same. Distortion, noise, speed, everything, the same. But those two transistors did not sound the same, not at all. One had a clarity and an openness, that was the 8099, compared to the 4401, which is closed in. Why? At the time, we had no idea. But that wasn't important, because what was important was that we started learning, okay, relating. In my head, if I do this, I get that. If I say this, that will happen, right? And that just takes years. What happens when I use a film capacitor at the input of a preamplifier it, that we, we, we form a, a low-pass filter to get rid of some of the ultrasonics. That's very standard practice. Well, I mean, have it or not have it. There you go. Plug it in, not plug it in. Listen to it. Does it make a difference? Yes. What difference? You begin to learn those differences and you start forming a picture in your head. Now that I know that too low of a low-pass filter is going to sound a little muffled and if it goes up high enough, it'll sound more open. If it's gone altogether, there's a tinge of brightness onto the sound. You learn those things by listening and experiencing them. Then you try and apply a bit of engineering and science and try and figure out why and, and memorialize that. And it's just, it's a long, long process. I could go on for hours and I don't want to do that. But I hope that gives you a brief glimpse into what's going on and why. Thanks. Appreciate the question. Talk to you tomorrow.